Hi there, this is Kevin Phillips, and in this video I want to do a quick tutorial on using a very cool free plugin called the Grit Node. Now the Grit Node, and I'll bring up the website so you can see where to get it from, is a free plugin for Windows and the Mac. Um, it's essentially a type of accessibility shader. What I mean by accessibility, or occlusion shader if you're more familiar with that term, is it looks for edges or grooves where geometry is butting against the edge of outcropping geometry and tries to find all those edges and shade them. These are the places where uh, where basically rust would occur or grime would occur because they're areas where dust and liquids and so forth collect and they, they don't go away. They kind of sit there and start corroding away the surface. Uh, I've seen people in the past and even I used to in the past use just a fractal with a brown patchy color and let that paint all over the surface and that looks cool sometimes but there's, I mean, rust and corrosion occur for a reason, and they don't just occur all over the place for the sake of being there. So let's have a look at how we use the grit node. Now I've added the grit node to Lightwave, and I'm going to surface editor, and pick fuselage, make sure the little tick box is checked here so it, it processes the nodes, and click edit nodes. It's a node plugin, so when I've added node plugins, and you're going, where is it? You'll usually find them under add node, additional. And there it is there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this directly in, so the grittiness output, which is the result of the shader, into the color, just so we can see the effect quickly, and do a quick render. Now these are the default settings, and like anything, just plugging something in doesn't always uh, necessarily mean you're going to get a good result straight out, and you don't with this one. You'll notice that it's found all these edges around the canopy, around uh, the joins of wings, and so forth, but it's making a bit of a mess here. You've got black splotchy marks everywhere, and it doesn't look very much like rust. So let's have a look at how we manipulate this um, node to give us a much better result. So I'll double click on the node, bring up its settings. And the two that I'm most interested in here are these top two, sensitivity and fall off. Sensitivity says how sensitive should the shader be to geometry. The smaller this value is, the more sensitive it is. So if we said zero, I'll show you the result of that. So no sensitivity, or zero percent sensitivity, makes the shader pick up all kinds of stuff that you don't want it to, such as the edges of polygons, uh, and so forth. And it looks pretty nasty. So low sensitivity is not a good idea. If we knock this up to maybe 15%, we did a render, you'll notice that it no longer does um, as wider spread and like the default one of 3% it's not picking up all those kind of black splotches that we had. It's, it's it's fairly toned back to just edges like that. So sensitivity is one value you need to tweak just to kind of hone it back. The other setting underneath it is a thing called fall off and fall off is how far away should it uh, should it go before it fades off or disappears. And 250 mils looks pretty good to me. I'm going to leave the default there. If you want finer um, rust or corrosion or whatever, you can knock that value back to something smaller and it'll just make these go out less. Uh, so for now, I'm going to leave this as is. Okay, as we can see, it's kind of shaded it, but it doesn't look anything like rust or corrosion. So like anything in the node editor, um, we tend to have these options on this side which are the inputs so we can control oops let me just double click on that uh, we can control these values by actually just feeding something into them rather than uh, just setting a value and this is what I like so much about the node system so I'm going to add node 3d textures and I'm going to add a turbulence node which is the lightways kind of generic fractal noise that it uh, tends to set when you add a procedural texture I'm going to double click on this to set some things so I'm going to say foreground color. If I right click in the gray swatch here and drag it to the right, I can brighten that up to white. I'm going to make this, it's kind of soft, so I'm going to make this a little bit more detailed. I'm going to say small scale 0.7 and I'm going to say frequencies 6. You notice it's a lot more kind of detailed now. I'm also going to knock the contrast up to 50% and that'll just bring the pattern out a bit, a bit more. And let's make it a little smaller. So I'll make it 100 mils around like that. So let's plug the uh, color 
into the sensitivity. Now you're probably thinking, why am I plugging color in? The alpha channel would also give me zero to 100% for the fractal pattern. Well, I like color because, let's double click again, you can use the, the shades, the background and the foreground color, black to white, and by manipulating these to different shades of gray, you're, you're basically creating different percentages because what Lightwave tends to do, and if you're not familiar with this, is it'll take the shade of gray between zero and 255, and it'll work out if it's 255, well, it's 100%. If it's zero, it's zero percent. Um, if it's anything in between, then it's a percentage. So it converts the shade of color to a percentage. And this lets me manipulate those uh, pretty easily. The alternate to that is, of course, you feed the color into a gradient, use a gradient to remap it and plug that in. But that's an extra step that I don't want to waste time doing. Okay, so I've plugged this in. And let's do another test render to see the effect of having a fractal pushed into the sensitivity. And we can see already, uh, much nicer. We're getting this kind of patchy rust spots on things, getting a lot more rust near the edges of things. So adding a fractal in there gives us all this kind of extra detail and it feels a lot more natural. The nice thing, of course, you're probably thinking, well, that's just a fractal patchy marks all over the surface, is that it is, but at the same time, it concentrates a lot of the grunge close to those edges. So it's kind of behaving like we'd expect rust to really behave. So let's minimize that. Let's uh, test it by, let's invert that texture and see if it makes a difference. So we'll put the fractal the other way around. Always pays to try a few different fractals and a few different settings just to see if you get a different result. In fact, I kind of prefer the inverted one. It's got kind of a lot more kind of detail around that edge then that one looks a bit kind of soft. Now, it depends on what you're after. I like that. I'm going to use that. Now, obviously, it doesn't look like rust. It kind of looks like black shading. So the easiest way to make something look rusty is to kind of take that. Let's disconnect it from color like I did there. I'm going to add a gradient in here. Oops, gradient. And I'm going to feed the grittiness into the input. Then I'm going to double click on the gradient. And what happens with the, the grittiness, it says zero or black is where most of the grit is, and one is where there is nothing. So if I was to go to the top one, zero, and give this kind of a nice brown, rusty kind of color, let's knock down the value, dark brown, that'll do. I'll take the top one, let's make the top one, we can right click in here and drag to make a white. In fact, I'll make it a little bit gray, that'll do. I would take that color and plug it in. And do a quick test render. You notice that we've now got a lot nicer kind of a, the color just makes it stand out a lot more as a rust. Now to just give it that even more authentic rusty look, rust tends to be quite uh, gritty looking. So we'll take that top one and say, okay, the brown is nice, but let's have a bit more detail in the grittiness of rust. Um, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll take this key in the gray in the gradient and tick this box show output and what show output does is it gives us these inputs for that particular that key you notice we got one here key one color so what we can do is we can go add node 3d textures let's add another fractal let's double click on that let's set the background and the foreground color to a nice brown couple of shades of brown that you'd expect maybe in rust. Let's uh, also make it really tiny, so it's a really fine granny pattern. So maybe 10 millimeters. Okay, that's pretty cool. And let's just plug that one into here. So instead of being the flat brown color, it's now this kind of noisy, pixely, kind of rusty pattern. Now let's have one more look. Takes a little water render. That's much better. It's now got that nice grainy, rusty thing going on.